Kung isa ka sa mga estudyante kinakabahan dahil ilang sem na lang ay magtitesis ka na, then this video might be for you. Hello everyone, my name is Mark Vermeer, but you may also refer to me as Your Highness. Charot. <laughs> Inuha ko tong video na to dahil naalala ko nung teaching days ko pa, sa tuwing nababanggit ko ang salitang thesis, lahat ay matik na tatakot. But there are actually lots of reasons why they should be afraid. Kahit pasabihin natin ilang units lang yun, 3, 4, 6, hindi ka talaga makakagraduate hanggat di mo siya naipapasa. A thesis, kung hindi pa kayo aware sa term, can be a document, a project, or a combination of both that will serve as a final requirement para makagraduate ka sa inyong degree. Think of it as one of your final stages in your ACADS na kung saan i-apply mo na lahat ng mga natutunan mo from when you are in your first year to third year days. Mahirap man, yes, pero wala namang mahirap na hindi nalalagpasan as long as you are doing something about it. And this is where I come in. In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to prepare on your nalalapit na kamatayan. Charot! Thesis. Tip number one, have your titles ready as soon as possible. It's not advisable na kung kailan ka lang nag fourth year, e eh doon ka pala mag-iisip ng mga title proposals mo. That's not a good idea. Malaki ang chance na mag ka sa oras. Normally, sa isang thesis subject, ang pasahan at papapa-approve ng mga titles ay nagaganap tuwing first term. And ilang gano'n ba kaikli yun? Kaikli lang, sobra. Mga uh, isang buwan lang siguro. So, ang kalaban mo rito ay oras. And hindi magiintay ng ang mga subject advisors mo, thesis advisors mo, hanggang sa makaisip ka. So, better na second year college ka pa lang or nasa third year, first sem, eh, mag-isip-isip ka na. Tip number two, your project should have a purpose. Actually, given na dapat yan. May mga napapansin kasi ako sa mga students na nahadol ko before na may malang, may may pasa lang. Tayo mga nasa field ng IT or any computer course degree, we are all problem solvers. So act like one. Kung sa inyong community may mabagal na process or may nakita ng isang establishmento na mabagal ang pila, then you could propose a queuing system for that. Problems are actually everywhere. Need mo lang maging observant. Tip number three, know your members well. Sa classroom, minsan hindi tayo nabibigyan ng freedom mamili ng mga members natin. But that's actually fine. Trust me. I know some of you might reason out, bakit ko pa naging kagrupo sa ito ganyan? Eh, tamad-tamad nun. Hindi naman natulung. The key here is to identify your members' strengths and weaknesses. Kung may isang member ka na mahilig makipagdaldalan, then assign that person as your interviewer sa client ninyo or data gatherer. Kung yung isa naman is magaling sa art, then baka mas magandang i-assign siya sa designing task. Tukol naman doon sa pasaway, uh, lalong hindi yan tutulong kung lagi mo lang siyang susumbatan. Kung lagi mo lang siyang aawain or kung hindi mo siya tatatruhin as a member. Include that person in your meetings as his opinions and make sure that he feels that na he belongs. And in that way, tutulong at tutulong din yan. Tip number four, assign more on the dev team. Sa thesis or capstone project ng mga computer-related courses, expect na most of the time about software development yan. E eh, ilang months lang ba yung given? Four, minsan eight kung dalawang sem. So napakaikli. And developing softwares in that short amount of time is hard. And it will be even harder kung iisa lang ang dev sa inyong team. I know this might contradict what I just said sa previous tip, but assigning dev tasks on most of your members is the wisest choice you have. Dahil ang pinaka-output niya man talaga dito ay yung software. Kung sa docs na focus ang remaining members ng yung team at yung software ay hindi pa tapos, ano mo yung tutulong ng docs? So kunwari, in a group of five, better na dalawa doon ay main devs. Isang technical writer, isang designer, saka isang tagaluto ng pansikan doon. Charot, isang tagates. Pero yung tatlong yun, yung hindi main devs, yung technical writer, tester, saka designer, better na bigyan din sila ng small dev tasks. At nang sa gayon ay mapabilis ang progress ng inyong software development. At wag dapat nilang idahilan na hindi sila marunong mag-program. Dahil maraming units ng programming subjects ang kailangan daanan bago ka makarating ng thesis. Anong ginawa nila sa mga panahong yun? Sa mga programming subjects nila? Natulog? <laughs> Tip number five, be on the same boat. It's hard to manage a team kung walang nangyayaring communication. And this usually shows kapag thesis defense na wherein kapag tinanong ang isang member ng team kung ano yung 
statement of the problem na kanilang thesis, aba hindi pa masagot. Pambihira. Para maiwasan ng ganong pangyayari, I suggest na mag-search kayo ng platforms where you can share ideas online. Pwede gawa kayo ng GC and make sure na lahat ng members niyo ay naka-add. I-add nyo rin yung kahit na hindi masyadong natulong para ma-force siya na tumulong. And have a centralized sheet kung saan pwede kayo mag-log ng mga accomplished tasks nyo in that day. Para aware kayo sa mga happenings. At para hindi kayo kabahan sa questioning part ng inyong future thesis defense, make sure na aware ang bawat team members niyo sa pinaka-latest copy ng inyong talks. You could use a uh, cloud storage. Doon yung store yung pinaka-latest copy ng docs. So, pwede sa Google Drive or OneDrive. And make sure na binabasa ng bawat members niyo ang bawat nakalagay doon. Para kapag tinanong kung ano yung scope ng inyong project, ano yung limitations, aware sila sa kung anong sasagot. Good luck. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you everyone for watching. I post new videos every Sunday. So if you wanted to be alerted as soon as I upload, ring that bell button. Be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and I also write stories on Wattpad. Check that out. That's an order. Charot. Have a nice day. Bye.